to my transform controls and I will move it on the H position to the center. For this one, the bird actually moves out of the shot, right? The bird is in the middle of the shot at the beginning, but it moves out of the shot at the end. So how do I keep the bird in the center the whole time? Well, uh, the newest version of Premiere Rush now has uh, auto reframe. So I'll go over here to effects and I'll go to the motion effect at the bottom here. So if I go to motion, there is that auto reframe button. So I'll click auto reframe and it just takes a second and it has already auto reframed the bird. So now let's see what it looks like. Keeping the bird in the center the whole time. Isn't that awesome? That's pretty cool, right? The same thing here, if I want to auto reframe the shot, I'll click auto reframe, but it has not adjusted it properly, right? It's kind of kept the focus on the back of the girl's head instead of on the phone. So what do I do? I can adjust the frame. Here on adjust frame, it will let me choose the frame that I want to keep. And I say, I want to keep that focus on the phone. So apply that auto reframe to the phone and now it has applied the auto reframe to the phone instead of the back of the girl's head, right? So let's say I've done this whole thing and now I want to open up this project, this exact Premiere Rush project inside of Premiere Pro on my computer. What does that look like? Well, let's go to Premiere Pro on the computer. So here I am within Premiere Pro on my desktop and you can see right here, it says, open Premiere Rush project. That is an option for you inside of Premiere Pro. So if you click on that, what it'll do is it'll pop up uh, all of the projects that you have clicked sh uh, sync with CC on. So this is our Toronto demo project. So we're gonna open that one up inside of Premiere Pro. And here is that sequence that we were just working on Actually, I think it was called, yeah, I think this is the one for IG feed. That's the one. So this is the one that we were just working on and it, everything is right here. We can now adjust it. The only thing is once you have made this into a, a Premiere Pro project, I'll close all this up. Once you've made this into a Premiere Pro project, you can't save it as a Premiere Rush project and bring it back into Premiere Rush again, if that makes sense, right? So now that I have this, um, what I want to do is perhaps I want to add like an intro animation here, right? So I'll go to Window and I'll open up Essential Graphics. And here in Essential Graphics, I'll go to the Adobe Stock Store. I'll choose free, because I want like a free graphic something, right? And I'll type in title. So this will search for free titles that are available in the uh, Adobe Stock Store for me to be able to use in my project. So I'll choose something like, um, what's this one? If I wanna just check it, I can, you know, just do a little hover scrub on top of it so I can check what that is and see if I want to use it. Maybe I like, simple title looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that looks great. Let's see what else. I think um, sliding pop art title. I want something simple so that it doesn't, you know, overpower what's going on behind it. But kind of want some sort of background as well. Now there's 42 pages of this kind of stuff here on the Adobe Stock Store just for free, right? If I picked premium, it would be even more. So let me drag this graphic over here. So this is the large typography graphic. This is what it looks like just by default. That's the music from, let me, let me bring this music up. So I just select the music. Right now it's on um, the A33 music track when it comes over from Rush. So I wanna bump it up to the, basically like the A2 music track. And to do that quickly, what I'll do is I'll select the music track, I'll hold down Alt and I'll click up on my keyboard and that'll just bump that music track all the way up to A2 so that I can see it better and I can mute it if I need it to be muted. So I'll mute that. Okay, so let's, again, let's take a look at what that large typography graphic looks like. 
Yes, I like it a lot. Cool. So let me just make it shorter and then I'll go into it and I can change it. So for the background here, what I'll do is I'll make it just black and I'll change the opacity so that you can see behind it. And then for what the text says, uh, I'll just type in Toronto, Tora Toronto. That kind of looks cool. Awesome. Oh, and then we have the glitch bar here and let's actually make it, let's make it kind of one of the colors that we find in the glitch bar too. We'll make it like a lighter color like that. Okay, great. So this is what our, um, let's just say that this is for the Instagram feed. This is what our Instagram feed video looks like. Let me turn the music back on and let me make it full screen. <laughs> That is so loud. I'm so sorry. Hold up. So if I want to um, make this more quiet, what I can do is I can go to the master tracks here, master track, and I can make everything more quiet by just dragging that line down of the master track. This one needs a little bit of reframing, so we'll do that real quick, and I think we'll be good. So let me let me just quickly reframe that. Also, this is blowing out a lot, so what I can do is I can I can drag down. Oh yeah, I see why I see why it's blowing out because I increased it a lot to be able to hear it from uh, within Rush. So there we go. Now it's now it's back to normal. It's not gonna blow out. <laughs> It might still blow out a little bit. Let me lower it a little bit. There we go. Let me reframe this one shot right here. So I'll click on it. I'll go to position over here and scale and I'll just scale it up slightly. There we go. So now that that's done, um, what I want to do is I want to export this for, I want to export multiple videos at the same time, and then I can keep working on more videos. So I have this uh, for IG feed over here, but I also have this one that says color, so I'll double click on it. So this will be like my YouTube version of it. And let me just make sure that the audio is lower. Right. So this will be my my YouTube version. This for IG feed. This will be my IG feed version. Maybe I want one for IG stories as well. So I'll go into the for IG feed version. I'll right click on it. Go to reveal sequence and project. There it is in my project. I will right click on that. And instead of going to duplicate, what I'll do is new sequence from uh, sorry, auto reframe sequence is what I'll select. And when I select auto reframe sequence, I'll be able to see select what um, what size I want that new sequence. So instead of the four by five, what I'll do is I'll do vertical nine by 16. I'll call it 03 for IG stories. And I'll say create and it'll auto reframe it for IG stories. Let me just make sure that it looks good. I'll mute the audio for now. See, I need to just adjust the text here a little bit so that it fits. Adjusting the text size, there we go. Looks like it has uh, adjusted and auto reframed the bird, which is perfect. It has auto reframed everything. Up, oh, this one needs a little bit of adjusting on the auto reframe, so I will do it. Just do it manually, really quickly. There we go. This needs a little bit of adjusting as well. There we go. So yeah, and maybe I don't want this the flat iron because it doesn't fit. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll duplicate it on top of itself. So right now it doesn't fit, but if I make it smaller, drag it down, duplicate it on top of itself by holding it down, holding down Alt and then dragging up. Now I have a second version of it that I can put on top of itself. So now it fills the whole frame. 
This is something that I like to do for when I have the vertical videos. For the no fairy entrance, you can see that the no fairy entrance sign doesn't fit the whole way in this vertical composition. So something that I can do is slip this clip underneath itself so that it starts a little bit earlier. So what I'm, tr what I'm trying to say is if I wanted to use this clip, right, I could bring it out here. I could expand it like this. I could start it earlier, right, like that. Then I could bring it back in to here and voila, now I see the whole sign, right? Because I've just chosen the earlier bit of the clip where you could see the whole sign, but you don't have to do any of that, right? You can just keep it here, change your uh, tool to Y, which is the slip tool, and then slip it underneath. So you can slip it like this. And now it has started earlier in the clip. And I'll just like move it a little bit so that you can see the sign a little bit better. There we go. No fairy entrance and then I'll scooch this over like that so you can see a little bit more. So now I have for IG feed, for IG stories, and I have the regular sized version and they're all different, right? So I'll go to this regular sized version, make sure for IG stories I have my uh, audio unmuted. So I'll go to the regular horizontal version and I'll press uh, command M. And what that'll do is that'll pull up my export settings box right here, my export settings box. And I'll just keep it on H.264 match bitrate high source. I won't change anything except for the output name. So I'll go to where I want it to be. So let's see, stream 24. I'll go to new Toronto for YouTube and I'll press save. And now instead of clicking export here, I will click Q. And what that does is it adds it to the Adobe Media Encoder Q. Let me put myself up here. So again, I'm clicking on Q instead of export, right? So I'll click Q and that adds it 